Have you had a hard time trying to figure out aperture and f-stop and how they relate? Well, in this video, we're gonna make it easy so you finally understand it. Will Simpson here and welcome to Exploring Photography. Today we're going over aperture and f-stop and really getting in and clarifying exactly how they work together. That way you can use this setting to make some really nice crispy photos. So what is f-stop and how does it relate to aperture? Well, inside your lens is a mechanism that looks kind of like a cut up wheel. Now this wheel opens and closes and allows light into the camera. Now this differs from your shutter because the shutter is in the camera, it's a screen. Whereas the aperture, the f-stop, me that mechanism is in your lens. Let's look at it here. So the aperture is the opening which the light passes through. The iris, also referred to as a diaphragm, is the mechanism that adjusts the aperture, also referred to as aperture blades, you might have heard. F-stop, this is the measurement of the opening. The F actually stands for focal length. A stop is defined as a doubling or a halving of light. You know that little meter on your camera, I'm sure you've seen it, it has a zero or a little kind of arrow, and then on the, the left-hand side it goes negative one, negative two, negative three, and on the right it goes positive one, positive two, positive three. Well, that's an exposure meter. That is a meter that your camera uses to judge proper exposure. If the little moving arrow is in the center, that means that the camera thinks the image is properly exposed. Now, if the little arrow is to the left or in the negatives, it's underexposed. And if it's to the right, it's overexposed. So here's how to, to kind of compensate for that. You can use this meter to adjust the stops. Zero to one is one stop. One to two is one stop. Zero to negative one is one stop. And negative one to negative two is one stop. Those little dots in the middle are thirds of a stop. It allows you to be more precise. So if you were to raise your f-stop, one stop, let's say from 2.8 to 3.2, this will have the amount of light that your camera is allowing in. It'll darken the image. So you can balance that by, let's say, raising your ISO one stop from 100 to 200, allowing more light in to compensate for the darkening of your adjustment with the f-stop. So you can use this meter to, to see exposure and to adjust accordingly. It's a really good thing to rely on in the beginning, but don't get completely reliant on it because your camera is judging the entire image for exposure. Now you may want something a little bit more specific. So once you get better, you can kind of rely on yourself, but the meter is a good guideline to start with. Bokeh is defined as the blurriness or out of focus points behind your subject. It's also how the, how the camera, the lens renders light. For example, when you see those really cool balls of light behind people that are out of focus, that's considered bokeh. But bokeh itself is actually all of the blurriness or out of focusness. Now, how does this, how does this differ from depth of field? Well, depth of field is the first and last point of focus. Everything after that that's blurry, it's bokeh. So I myself have said this wrong several times, but that's just to clarify the difference between the two. One is the actual sharp, the acceptable in focus points. That's depth of field. Everything after that, the blurriness is bokeh. So now that we understand those terms, we need to look at what the f-stop actually does. Well, the f-stop affects your exposure, the amount of light into the camera, and it affects your depth of field. Consider the aperture similar to the pupil in your eye. The larger the aperture, the more the light. So if you were to walk into a dark room, your, your pupil would get much bigger, allowing a lot of light in. Now on the reverse side, if you walk into a really bright area or go outside on a sunny day, your pupil's gonna contract and get smaller. And that's the same thing with aperture. When you need less light, make the aperture smaller, which is the opening in the lens. When you need more light, you open the aperture. Now here's the complicated part, and this is where I think a lot of people get confused. The f-stop and aperture seem backwards. So the wider your aperture, the larger that opening is, the smaller the f number, the f-stop. The smaller the aperture, the less light, the bigger the f number or the f-stop. So for example, if you have an f2.8, you have a very large aperture, very wide opening. If you have an f16, you have a very small aperture, a very small opening. So that's kind of where it gets a little confusing. Now, I recommend a really low F number, F1.4, 1.8, 2.8, 
those are great for portraiture. When you're taking pictures of models or uh, animals or something that you really wanna capture the focus on, all the attention of the viewer, you want to go to that subject then I recommend using that low F number or wide aperture. This really brings all of the attention to that thing and makes it look super sharp and very crisp. It's a really cool thing. You see that portrait mode that iPhones have? Well, that's their way of doing that effect. It's not as good as a, as a DSLR camera or a mirrorless camera, but it is pretty good for what they have. Now, if you want a landscape or if you want to be able to see everything in the image, use a very high f-stop or a very small aperture. The one thing to remember is when you have a very low f-number or a wide aperture, you're gonna get a lot of light. And when you have a very high f-number or a small aperture, you're gonna get less light. So make sure to counterbalance for exposure. To give you an example so it's a little bit more clear, let's, let's check this out. I took a few sample photos for you. So this photo here, is an f 2.8 and i'll put the settings i'll put all the settings below on the picture but you can see it's an f 2.8 so that's a very low f-stop a very wide aperture remember that now you can notice in this photo that the a is very much in focus very crisp however anything behind it is all blurry even right here you see the side of the block is quite blurry the front also blurry so that shallow depth of field, the points of focus are the A and maybe a little bit back here, but that's all that's in focus. So let's take the next one, same photo. And this one is shot at an F 6.3. So kind of a middle, middle ground. Also the focus is still on the A. So we look, A is definitely in focus. However, it's still blurry, but you can see it's more in focus down the side and it gets blurry from there on, but a little bit more in the foreground right here seems more in focus. And then the final one, this is an F13, which is a smaller aperture, but more things are gonna be in focus. If you look at this one, the focus is still on the A, but now you can really see the B. You can still see the C a little bit, but it's getting a little blurry and the D is still visible, but blurry and the E is blurry but a lot more in focus. So if we look at this, the difference between an F13, which is this one, and an F2.8. F13, F2.8. Big difference. So you can really see the examples of depth of field. Distance plays a factor here too, but for this, we're gonna go outside and show you an example. So let's go do that. So I came outside to show you how this affects uh, with your depth of field with regards to your background. Now, the farther your background is to your point of focus, right now I'm using an F 2.8. So the farther your background is to your point of focus, I'm the point of focus, the tree is in the background. It's about, I'd say five feet away from me. Now you'll notice it's quite blurry. However, the closer I get to the background, the more it'll come in focus. So if I slowly walk backwards, it becomes more and more in focus. If I come back forwards, it's back out of focus. So just remember that when you're taking pictures using a low f-stop, you have to keep your background far away if you want that crispy depth of field. Now, it's cold out here, I'm gonna go back inside. That was a lot of data. I hope you kept up. It's even hard for me to keep up sometimes. It's, it's just a complicated thing. But let's summarize. Small f-stop equals wide aperture equals lots of light equals crispy depth of field. Large f-stop equals little aperture equals very little light equals everything in focus. So, depends on what you want, but each one has its different uses, and once you get used to it, it's a really awesome effect. But it's simple, right? <laughs> if there wasn't anything you fully understood on it, comment below, let me know, and I'll try and explain it a little bit more because it, it does seem a little complicated at first. Once you really get to understand your, your f-stop and how what effects it creates, you'll know, like, you'll go out on a shoot and you'll be like, okay, I want crispy depth of field, so I'm gonna use a low f-stop. But if you want everything in focus, you're gonna use a high f-stop. So it just depends on what effect you wanna create when you're taking photos. But once you learn it, it's a really fast, easy setting, and then you just use the other settings to get proper exposure for the quality that you want. It's easy. 
just go practice. Well, that's it for me on this video. I really hope this clarified up how f-stop and aperture relate and how you can use it. Now, this is my first video on this channel, and if you wanna join in on exploring photography, subscribe below, and I'll see you in the next one. Have you been... Now, distance plays... <clears throat> wide f-stop, small... <laughs> wide f-stop, no, that's not right. Damn it. Low f-stop, wide aperture, lots of light, crispy depth of field. <laughs> wide aperture, large f-stop, small aperture, everything in view. <laughs>